today I want to speak about a God who is willing to do miracles in our families. And this is a, this is a message for the time. Um, I believe that there is uh, the Lord is restoring many families in this time of our period while we are praying. And uh, last one week we were praying for families that the Lord will restore joy, peace, and bring um, greater um, intimacy with the Lord in our all the families, in all generations. Hallelujah. John chapter 2, Jesus starts his ministry with a miracle. Bible is a book of miracles from the first page of Genesis to the end of till Revelation. We can see miracles in mo most of the pages of the Bible, all of them. Because God is a God of miracle. I believe in miracle because I believe in God. And our God is a miracle working God. In the New Testament, Jesus started his ministry with a miracle, glorious miracle. And it started with a miracle in a wedding. God started his ministry inside a marriage. Inside a marriage, he's, he did a miracle and he started his ministry. Even today, God is going to do the same. He is a God who is going to do miracles inside the marriages, inside the weddings. Whatever happens inside, God will do a miracle inside uh, your wedding, in, in, inside your family. Hallelujah. Last week, I had um, a, few of the, a few of the prayer requests that I uh, received through social media around um, more than 50 percentage was uh, about marriages. They were praying for children, they were praying for a spouse. And I believe, you know, um, last one week we were praying about the same thing, about marriages to be restored in the name of Jesus, about every scheme of the devil be destroyed in the name of Jesus from our families, from our marriages. Because I believe God sets free um, um, uh, um, uh, atmosphere of freedom inside marriages. Hallelujah. See, when Jesus um, started his ministry, um, the first miracle happened inside a wedding. And um, God uh, established um, in the Garden of a Eden a family of Adam and Eve. That was our God. He started the first institution that God um, established was a family and uh, the New Testament even starts in Matthew chapter 1 saying about families it mentions about family starting from Abraham to Jesus Christ see in the book of um, Matthew chapter 1 it says the book of generation of Je Jesus Christ. Why generations were mentioned? Because God is a God of generations. God is a God not just for individual, but he is a God of families. He will, he will influence not just you, but he will influence your spouse all around you. Because God wants to be in the midst of families today. Hallelujah. See, book of um, in the in the in Matthew when you read the book of generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. And from there it starts um, saying each name after name after name. Hallelujah. I was imagining what would happen if Abraham and Sarah is reading this Bible. They are reading from heaven this book of Matthew. They would see, look, Sarah, Abraham would say to Sarah, Sarah, look, see, my name and, uh, is the, our son's name is the, and not just the, see, uh, from the, Jacob's name is the, our grandson, and from the, Judah's name is the, see, our great grandson, God who was with me. See, it started with Abraham obeying God, or hearing the voice of God, and, and from the, God became not just God of Abraham, he became God of Sarah. He also became God of Isaac, Rachel. And from there he became God of Jacob, Leah. Hallelujah. He became God of those families and generations. 
Hallelujah. From one after the other, when you start hearing the voice of God, when you start obeying and believing in him, God becomes God of your family. Hallelujah. He influenced one after the other generation. And, and I, would, I would imagine Abraham would be telling to Sarah, Sarah, look, the same God who was with me and who was with you was with our son Isaac. He was with his wife. He was with my, our grandsons. And not only that, he was a God of David. He was a God of Ruth and Boaz. He was a God of Solomon. And not just that, he was, he was the God of Jacob, the father of Joseph. And he was the God of Joseph and Mary. And he is and he will always be the God of Jesus Christ, his only son. Hallelujah. That is our God. A favor of God will follow you um, um, all the generations to come. Bible says, I will bless your thousand generations. That is the blessing of God. Hallelujah. The families will be blessed when you start seeking him. When you start obeying him, your families will be blessed. One after the other, the mercies of God will follow the generations to come. Hallelujah. Shall we lift our hands and receive it today and say, my God is a God of my family. My God is a God of my generation. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. He declares to the Israelites and said, um, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. You, I, I don't know about you. He, he looked to them and said, I don't know about you. What is your choice? But I know my God is the with me and my household. My God is my deliverer. My God is my supplier. He will protect us. He will guide us. And I will serve him and he will be my master. This is what we pray for. Hallelujah. See, one very interesting thing that happened in this John chapter 2 was on the third day. We can read um, uh, from um, John chapter 2 verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited for the wedding. Hallelujah. One particular character and the nature of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit and the Father God is that when you invite him, he will be there in the midst. Hallelujah. He will never go to a place which he is not never invited. He will never go to a place which he is not welcomed. But Jesus went there because he was invited with disciples. And, uh, when they, um, and when they ran out of wine, mother of Jesus said to the, him, they have no wine. See, there is a problem in the midst of celebration. Wedding in, in Israel is a culture. They have a culture of celebrating their weddings. It's not just for one um, one hour, two hour. No, they celebrate it for weeks. For one whole week, at least they will celebrate. And that is how even now the, um, the Middle Eastern, the Greeks, um, um, Israel, all those areas, they celebrate their wedding. Hallelujah. See, wedding is there to celebrate. Hallelujah. It should, your celebration should not stop after wedding, but it should go on and go on and on. Turn to your um, wife, turn to your husband and say, our celebration should go on. It should not stop the, on, on the third day or the second day. No, it will keep on going. Hallelujah. We will celebrate together in the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I see a smile in your face as you mean it? Hallelujah. See, they have, a, they have a, a tradition of celebrating their weddings. Now what happened was there was a lack inside those celebrations. There was a lack. There was a problem because the wine has run out. You know, wine is um, determining your fruitfulness. In those areas, if such a thing happened, even, even in India, you know, th those areas of Asia, if something happens like that, people will always blame the bride. Hallelujah. See, that is the tradition because bride is the glory of wedding. 
Hallelujah. Bride is the most attractive. The people will come. They don't come to most of the people. They come to see the bride and the bridegroom. Hallelujah. They don't they, they are not worried about what the um, father in law is wearing. They are not worried about what others are wearing. No, they, are, they just come and see. Even now, people come and look at the bride and the bridegroom, how they how they dress, how they look. Hallelujah. Most of the weddings, they don't even mind what the bridegroom is wearing because everybody's eyes will be searching for the bride. How beautiful she is. She is the glory of the wedding. Hallelujah. Now what happened in this uh, wedding is now all the glory of this bride is turned into sadness and sorrow because people ask, will start to blame her. They, they would say, the people from the bridegroom's family, they would say now, oh, because there is some problem in bride, there is a lack. There is no fruitfulness. There is something wrong. Hallelujah. Even today is the, you, you may believe it or not, even today people would say that. Hallelujah. Now the, the glory of the wedding is in tears. Hallelujah. Bride is sad. And you know, you know what happened there? When Mary came to Jesus and said, um, Jesus, there is a problem here. Now, immediately he replied in verse 4, Jesus said to her, Woman, what does you concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Hallelujah. It is not his time for a miracle. It is not his a place to start his ministry. But now something is forcing him to do a miracle. Hallelujah. Let me tell you one thing. Listen to this carefully. Tears of a bride will alter the timing of God. Hallelujah. Tears of a bride will alter every timing of God. Hallelujah. Church is the bride of Christ. When the church is ready to shed tears and pray, timing of God will be altered. Hallelujah. He is not worried about the time or the place. But then and there, Jesus was ready to do a miracle. Hallelujah. He can never bypass a crying woman. Hallelujah. A crying mother, a crying wife, a crying sister. If you are crying in prayer for somebody, I will say the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. All your tears, God preserves it in his storeroom. He preserves it and he will never forget it. If you have cried for your son, if you have cried for your brother, if you have cried for your parents, cry right now because we are crying and praying in front of a lot of lords who can never bypass your cry. Hallelujah. Years and years will pass away. Hallelujah. There was a woman called Hagar who cried in the, in the midst of wilderness and in the time of Abraham. Hallelujah. She was just a slave woman. God couldn't just ignore but God can't ignore a crying woman hallelujah somebody who cried this is the principle of a church hallelujah church that is ready to pray and cry God have to listen to them hallelujah generations to come will benefit out of their her tears hallelujah now when the bride is sad now bride is crying Jesus said I am gonna do a miracle this is my time hallelujah See, um, the first, first word that God spoke to after his resurrection was to a woman who was crying, Mary. One word he asked is, why are you weeping, woman? Why are you crying? Hallelujah. Why are you crying? It was not the plan of God and the will of God in that time because he has not yet entered inside the glory. He had never showed up to the Father's presence. But Jesus had to stop there because a crying woman stopped him from going forward. Hallelujah. He stopped there and he came back and spoke to Mary. Hallelujah. This, even today, the, um, uh, Jesus is speaking to many right now. Hallelujah. I heard a, um, um, a report. It's very sad to read such things. Family violence is, is on the rise so much. So much. Family violence everywhere. Suicides and, and uh, um, uh, brokenness inside the family. Hallelujah. 
that is not the will of god when you let when you invite him into your wedding god will start doing miracles hallelujah when you are ready to pray when you are ready to shed tears upon um, somebody even last night there was somebody was sharing um what uh, what she was going through he came to australia with great expectation after marriage hallelujah years ago and after she she came um in 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 this um great nation after some time she um she all her dreams were crushed into pieces hallelujah there was no peace in the family she was saying every day i had to weep every day they were shouting and screaming hallelujah there was no peace inside my family and i could not tell this to anybody because the my culture doesn't allow that hallelujah this is the lord you know when when you when you are ready to pray he will perform miracle hallelujah there were people um who were saying pray for us pray for us because this is um our family need prayer one after the other one after the other but god is a god who will do miracles for you hallelujah years ago i remember how jesus um, um is so faithful in when somebody prays and cries out to him i remember one testimony was um there was a there was a um evangelist family um who who were serving the lord and suddenly what happened was that um that wonderful brother um lost his life um in in the in the um in his very young age and uh, um he was faithfully serving the lord and in between in those crises they were very young and that um, and the couple were very young and they had two um, very lovely kids and they were so so small on a very very young age uh, maybe 5 or 6 very young and this um, uh, sister was so um, broken inside she was in tears and she was shocked so much and after the during the funeral and all those things were happening there were a lot of people in the house there were a lot of them relatives friends everybody pastors you know um church members everybody came and um they they consoled her you know they they prayed for her and and after they all left in the evening this lady was alone in that house with with um both her uh, children and uh, in that time suddenly she was she came so sad and she started crying she was on her knees and she don't know what, how the life will go on because they don't have any income they don't have anybody and she was crying and crying um at that time um both her um kids were sleeping in the at at night time and she was um uh, on next to their bed and she was crying looking to heavens lord what will i do lord who, who will provide lord father and while she was praying and crying she saw a vision inside her room the lord jesus came next to him next to her and he spoke like this um i will be with you all throughout your life i will be your husband just as your husband i will love you i will care you i will protect you i will nourish you and i will provide for you hallelujah this is the lord that we serve see years pass years passed after 20 years this wonderful lady shared this testimony to me and said this is the god that i serve hallelujah all through my all my life i have lacked nothing god has provided supernaturally every day every day hallelujah sometimes people i have never seen or never heard of they come to my house and speak to me and said my god last night god spoke to me give this to you hallelujah they they provided every education needs were met supernaturally hallelujah this lady went around sharing the gospel this is what our god does when you are ready to cry and when you are ready to invite him in your brokenness hallelujah inside families there will be miracles in the name of jesus hallelujah this is the lord because he can never bypass the tears of a bride tears of his church hallelujah in verse 5 john chapter 2 his mother said to his servants whatever he says just do it 
Hallelujah. This is the key of miracle. Key of miracle is obedience. Hallelujah. When you are ready to obey the Lord. Maybe it seems funny sometimes, the instructions or what you read. But when you say, Lord, I'm going to obey. I don't know if people will humiliate me. People will make fun of me. But I'm here to obey everything that the Holy Spirit will speak. Hallelujah. Obedience is the key. Obedience is the key. One, one um, truth that I was, I sometimes I read and I'm, I get sh shocked off is about Samson. In the Old Testament, Samson was anointed, and whenever the anointing comes upon him, the whole village will know, the whole town will know that the anointing is upon him. Hallelujah! He would do such a mighty thing. Even now, when you're anointing, speaking in tongues, and everybody, every church member, every pastor would know that there's something is going on. The Lord is doing such a mighty thing. And when um, the Bible says in one verse in Judges. That the Holy Spirit has left him and Samson even didn't know that. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit came, everybody knew. Everybody in town knew. And when the Holy Spirit left, not even Samson knew that the Holy Spirit is not there. Hallelujah. See, in the New Testament, this is not about leaving uh, the Holy Spirit leaving us. In the New Testament, when the Holy Spirit is grieved, maybe you, people may not realize People may not realize. Hallelujah. Why, why he grieves? Why he is quenched? Because of disobedience. When people of God doesn't obey what he says. When him, they ignore the instructions of the Holy Spirit. When he is not honored. He, he sometimes uh, is quenched. And sometimes he is grieved. Hallelujah. We are not here to quench or grieve the Holy Spirit. But we are here to honor him. Obey him. Hallelujah. And in, in our families. We are here to honor the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let all our families inside our houses and generations be an altar for God to rest. Hallelujah. Let it be a resting place for the presence and the glory of God. Every day. Every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed to the day of redemption. Hallelujah. Do not grieve. He can be grieved with of disobedience. He can be grieved. Hallelujah. But this is the key of every miracle. When you start obeying the Lord, you will see miracles. You will see one after the other. Your prayers have been answered. Hallelujah. This is the time that we check. Lord, is there any disobedience in my life? Is there anything that I am not obeying that you have instructed me? Faith needs obedience. Hallelujah. Sometimes faith, um, um, step of faith is obeying what the Lord has spoken to you. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Now there were, now there were set the six water pots of stone. According to the manner of purification of Jews containing 20 or 30 gallon apiece. Hallelujah. There were six um, stone jars that was meant for purification of Jews. See, these jars are not meant to hold the wine. But they were intended for purification purpose. They, 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 are, they were not a, a vessel of honor at all. Hallelujah. But when God needs a mir to perform a miracle, He bought those jars from the outside and brought it inside the house. Hallelujah. J God chooses the one that is outside to fill His glory, to fill them with the, with the glory of God. And Jesus said, Fill them to the brim. Fill them with water to the edge. Hallelujah. Fill them to the edge. That is the limit. What is the limit? To the edge is the limit. Hallelujah. Sometimes we pray, Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill, fill, Lord, more and more. Hallelujah. The problem is not the sufficiency of the Holy Spirit, but the problem is the lack of space that you have in your life. In the, in the Old Testament book of 2 Kings, there is a miracle in the time of Elijah where, where there was um, um, 
when God did a miracle of oil, there was a widow in that place. And she was running around to find space to fill the oil. Hallelujah. The Bible says like this. When there was no more place to contain the oil, the flow stopped. Hallelujah. That is in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 6. The problem is not the sufficiency of oil, but the problem is the lack of space in your life. Hallelujah. If you have space in your life available for God, God is faithful enough to fill every vacant spaces. Hallelujah. If you say, Lord, I am available for you. Lord, give me grace to pray. Lord, give me strength to go around and preach the gospel. Lord, give me grace and talent so I may honor you. You are creating space in your life. Hallelujah. Somebody uh, was, um, you know, there was a, um, story um, which I heard a long ago which was it was about a man who went for fishing and he would he would get um, you know first first um, time he got a um, pretty half a feet um, long fish and whatever he always gets a big ones big ones like um, maybe uh, salmon or whatever but every time he gets a big fish he just put it back throws it out throws it back you know somebody was saying why are you throwing them back you know, the fish is big. What he replied is, fish is big, but my basket is too small for a fish. Hallelujah. The anointing and the, and the glory of God is so wonderful and big. But if your basket is too small, if you, are don't, if you don't have anything to do about it, if you are not willing to go around and use it, then there is no point in asking, Holy Spirit, Lord, fill me more. No. Hallelujah. We will ask for the Holy Spirit and at the same time we will make space in our life for God to use us and fill us. Hallelujah. This is the principle of the Bible. If you are ready to go, he will fill you. The anointing of the Lord is upon me. The Bible says in Luke, says anointing is upon him, upon me to preach the gospel to the poor, preach the kingdom. Preach the kingdom. Do it for the kingdom. Use it in your prayer life. Use it in your worship life. Use it for somebody. And the Lord will fill you, fill you and fill you like never before. Hallelujah. He will satisfy you. My cup will run over. The Bible says it will run over. It will flow. But if you have that space in your life and say, Lord, fill me. I want to, I want to be used in your kingdom. Lord, fill me. I want to use it to pray for somebody. Lord, fill me. Lord, let me be a blessing for many. Hallelujah. This is the principle of the Holy Ghost filling. Hallelujah. Verse 9, it says, When the master of the feast had tasted the water um, that was made wine and did not know where it came from, the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and he said to him, Every man in the beginning sets out good wine and when the guest well drunk, they serve the inferior. But you have kept the good wine until now. You have kept the good one, the best quality, till the last um, t um, mo uh, time of the wedding. Hallelujah. This is a principle that God is speaking to um, the church, to individuals right now. Hallelujah. Many times we feel we are so carried away in our olden days. We would say, oh, those days, olden days, they were so good. Oh, those days, five years ago, they were so good. They were so wonderful. Oh, I was so strong. I used to do this. I used to do that. But now I can't do that. Oh, I don't have that strength. If you're saying that, the Lord is promising you because he has kept the best for your last. Hallelujah. Your coming days will be better than what is going through. You just believe it and say, my God have a nature of doing such things. My God has kept the best wine till the last time, last of the wedding. Hallelujah. He has kept the best for me in my last days. Hallelujah. Jacob was a man who, who thought that he, everything is lost. He had to go through times and years of sorrow. 
when he found that um, the brothers have come back with a coat of blood saying that his beloved son Joseph was killed. And Bible says he was in a deep sorrow for many years and many years until one day he realized and he was revived. The Bible says the only time the word revival is mentioned in the Bible. He was revived in the spirit when he knew that Joseph is not just living somewhere, but he is being honored in the palace of Pharaoh by the Lord Almighty. All these years, God has preserved his possession. God has preserved his inheritance. He has preserved his generation. He was faithful with Joseph. Hallelujah. When he knew that, he was revived in the inside. The Bible says he, in these last days, he worshipped the Lord and he gave himself. He, hallelujah. In the last moment, till the last moment, this revival in him made him worship. Hallelujah. Because the God has kept the best for him, for his last. Hallelujah. He will do the same thing for us. He will do. When you think that it is over, when you think it is all done, oh, I don't have the strength like before. I don't have that, that um, 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 strength inside of me like before. No, I don't. Have, all those good days are over. If you're feeling that, God is speaking to you today. I have kept the best for your last. I have kept the best. I have not seen, you have not seen your best days yet. You will see it in the coming future. Just like Jacob, you will be revived and restored and renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That is the faithful God that we serve. Hallelujah. 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 If you're going through trouble in your marriages, this is what the Lord says. I have kept the best for you. I have kept the best for you in the coming days. Don't think, don't give up in your prayer. I will do be the, just like I did in the days of Jacob. I will do the same that I did in the life of Ruth. I will do the same just I have done in the life of Joseph. I will be your savior. Hallelujah. I will do miracles in your life. Verse 11. John chapter 2 verse 11. It ends like this. This. The beginning of signs. Jesus did in Cana. Galilee. And manifested his glory. And his disciples believed in him. Hallelujah. This is the beginning of signs. In the ministry of Jesus Christ. Beginning of signs. Hallelujah. After that, nowhere in the Bible you can search and can find that this is the end of signs that Jesus did. No. Why it is like that? Because it was the beginning in Cana, but it has never ended till this moment now. Hallelujah. It started in the marriage of Cana, but it went on through the apostles. It went on through Peter. It went on through John, through Paul, to Barnabas. Bible says there were extraordinary miracles done through Barnabas and Paul. Hallelujah. The, through Peter, there was extraordinary mi um, miracles happening in the name of Jesus Christ. It started in Cana, but it has never and 2000 over years has passed. It is still, he is still God of miracles. He is still, when you pray, this is the time and season of prayer. What we expect, we expect great things from God. We expect miracles from God. We expect restoration, revival, renewing of strength from God. We expect healing from God. Lives changed from God. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is a God of miracle. It started in Cana, but it has never ended anywhere. Hallelujah. Till that, from that time, the Holy Spirit started working the same way he has done in the life of Jesus. He has done in the life of Paul, Silas, um, Barnabas, uh, John, and, and Peter, and you can name it, apostles of God. Um, he is still the same God. Hallelujah. When you pray, we know God of miracles is going to do the same thing. Hallelujah. Even today, God is going to do it. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Together in the season of prayer. Hallelujah. How many of you would say, I expect a miracle today. I expect a miracle because my God is a God of miracle. In my family, in my generations, God will remain as a God of miracles. Hallelujah. Countless miracles he will do. Just like he has done in the time of Isaac where there was a lack. He blessed Isaac hundredfold. Just like in that wedding of Cana where the tears of the bride was wiped away. Hallelujah. He's doing the same thing to his bride, his church. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. How many of you would say, Lord, I need a miracle today. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, I need a miracle. You are the miracle working God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Shall we lift our hands in his worship and say, Lord of miracles. Lord, I believe that you're going to do something great than whatever I have asked, more than what I have asked. the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name you are you do miracles so great There is no one else like you There is no one else like you For you are great You do miracles so great There is no one else like you You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. We lift our voices and sing, Lord, you deserve all the you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things, and you deserve the glory. Before we close our broadcast, I would like to pray with you. Shall we close our eyes? Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for speaking to me today. Lord, I want to live for you. I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me and cleanse me with the precious blood of your only begotten Son. Make me new, Lord. I want to live for you. Help me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you have prayed that prayer for the first time, Bible says, God recognizes you as his own child. Bible says that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I encourage you to join a Bible-based church. If you're looking for a service near Melbourne, Australia, 
you're more than welcome to join our services online or in person. We are located in Hallam, Melbourne, Australia. God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, Amen.